speculation over whether Kamala Harris could be appointed to the Supreme Court is making the rounds on Capitol Hill. Speculation, I think, is ridiculous, but it's making the rounds, so we're going to discuss it. Now, while the proposal seemed far off to some Democrats, Politico reports that half of the party's strategists and officials interviewed for their recent story either volunteered or entertained a Harris nomination. Wow, how substantial. And given that Harris is even more unpopular than Biden, the spectator begs the question, are Kamala's days numbered as vice president to bring in a more popular VP? White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki responded to the chatter. Let's watch. Is there any scenario in which the president would select his vice president Kamala Harris for the Supreme Court? Again, I'm not going to speak to uh, any considerations, preparations, lists. Um, and as we've stated earlier, and you heard the president say, uh, it is there's a long history of Supreme Court justices determining when uh, they may retire, if they retire, and announcing that. Uh, and we're going to, uh, that remains the case today. Democratic strategist and director at Waxman, Michael Starr Hopkins, and editor-in-chief at the Post Millennial, Libby Emmons, are here to weigh in. Was that before he had officially resigned? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. Right. So she's not. So at that point, she's weighing in because I mean, she's refusing to weigh in at that point because you know he hadn't actually officially uh, announced that he was stepping down. He now has. Um, Michael, I I do think that this is not going to happen. This it's absurd. Uh, but I do think that the mere speculation about it in Politico and these other uh, kind of inside the Beltway outlets is evidence of, of a phenomenon around Kamala Harris that, that, is kind of, that is dragging her down. Like it is evidence that she's in some political trouble that these stories would even get past an editor. Uh, yeah, what, I think what's your read? That, <clears throat> this is a lot of clickbait. I mean, I don't think there's any chance that Kamala Harris becomes a Supreme Court justice. Uh, she, let me say, she certainly would be qualified if she did, but I think the idea that she's going to go from VP to Supreme Court justice, that's not going to happen. And so what we're seeing is places like Politico, which I write for, um, use this as clickbait to get more attention. I think there's nothing more and nothing less than that. Yeah, I, it's, I, I agree. I, I don't, Libby, what, what are your thoughts on this? I don't think, first of all, yeah. she's never going to want to do this job. Being on the Supreme Court is tons of work. She wants to, vice president is not very much work. She wants to be president. So she's not going to like take a job that takes you out of the potential presidential lane in order to like be a behind the scenes hardworking, like, like why, that's, this is a thankless job that she's not, it doesn't need, it doesn't play to her. It, it, it makes no sense. What do you think? Yeah, I think this is a, an idea that was launched by people who watch way too much House of Cards and West Wing. Mm -hmm. It's never gonna happen. It's absurd. She doesn't want the job. I'm sure that there are Democrats who just want her out of the way because she's so marvelously unpopular. But if Biden is really going to nominate a qualified black woman for the Supreme Court, I think he could do a lot better than Kamala Harris. Right. And Michael, what, what's, what's taking the White House so long? I, I mean, I know that this is normal. I know that Trump, Obama, everyone before this has taken, you know, sometimes you know, not just weeks, but months to name a Supreme Court nominee, they've known, they've been trying to get Breyer off the bench since like 2013. So, you know, why don't they have somebody ready to go so that we can ha be having the conversation about a particular person rather than uh, Kamala Harris and, and uh, or, or an entire category of, of black women jurists? Like, what what is you know as somebody involved in you know political strategy? What is so hard about just saying like here's the person that we want? Yeah, I mean I I wrote online that I thought that they needed to make this decision quickly, and the longer that they take, the more likely it is that they're going to get dinged by Republicans, and the more likely it is that someone like uh, Senator Cinema or Senator Mansion is going to find a way to impede this process. So I think the fact that they've already hit a week. They need to make this decision quickly. And like you said, I mean, they have a short list ready. And so they should have been going through the short list and doing a background check uh, preceding this. We all knew Breyer was going to retire. And so I expect in the next coming days an announcement to be made. 
Someone who wouldn't be in favor of a justice, Kamala Harris, by the way, former presidential candidate Tulsi Gabbard, who tweeted, quote, Biden chose Harris as his VP because of the color of her skin and sex, not qualification. She's been a disaster. Now he promises to choose a Supreme Court nominee on the same criteria. Identity politics is destroying our country. Republicans and Democrats Jesus. alike have voiced their opinions on Biden's promise to nominate a black woman to the vacant seat. Biden's found unlikely support in some Republican members like Senator Lindsey Graham, while Senator Ted Cruz has condemned Biden's decision. Saki defended the administration's pledge and fired back at Cruz yesterday. Here's that. So take Senator Cruz himself. He had no objection to Donald Trump promising he'd nominate a woman in 2020. Uh, repeat, no objection at all. In fact, he praised her on these grounds during, praised her on these grounds, the nominee. Uh, during her confirmation hearing, Senator Cruz said, quote, I think you're an amazing role model for little girls. What advice uh, would you give little girls? Uh, when President Reagan honored his campaign pledge to place the first woman on the court, he said it symbolized the unique American opportunity. There is no outcry around that. The president's view is that after 230 years of the Supreme Court being in existence, the fact that not a single black woman has served on the Supreme Court is a failure in the process, not a failure or a lack of qualified uh, black women to serve as Supreme Court justices. And so, Michael, it's okay to promise a woman will be nominated to the Supreme Court, but it's not okay to promise that a black woman will be nominated to the Supreme Court. How is that anything other than just racist? Yeah, I, so I want to first start off by addressing that Tulsi Gabbard comment. Tulsi Gabbard's the last person that should be lecturing anyone on anything. I mean, given her viewpoints on uh, gay marriage, you know, her problematic history on race, she's she just the gay last. Marriage, person. Doesn't she? Is that what you mean? It, she was anti-gay marriage for the longest time. She had a very problematic history with well, the so religious. Was Barack Obama. And her father. So was Hillary Clinton. She lasted a bit. She was much longer holding. Yeah, let's, let's not compare Tulsi Gabbard to Hillary Clinton. Like, there's a reason that Tulsi Gabbard has no part in any party except for Fox News. Um, when it comes to this, I think it's a little different. I think what we should really be focusing on is the fact that there are qualified black women who should have been on the Supreme Court previously, qualified black women who have not been considered for previous office. And now we have a president who's being open and saying, look, we have people of all races on the court and now we need to have full representation. The court should look like the country, and it doesn't. 95% of all members of the court have been white. Well, now we're going to change that up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Libby, what, what do you think? I, I think there's a difference between like a soft, maybe, a, maybe it's a stupid, just slight difference. We did a soft promise that we're going to have more diversity on the court and expand it in this way versus like the hard promise. Yes, I will not even consider anyone unless they are a black woman. And it's that kind of um, uh, sort of, no, it, it just has to be a black woman that sort of suggest you're not looking at their ideology or their or their or their thought process or their or their qualifications but in a very kind of tokenizing way i think it is uh substantially tokenizing and that was the issue that i had with it obviously i have no issue with a black woman serving on the supreme court she should be qualified i'm sure that there are myriad qualified black women to serve on the court and if I were one of them, I would really want to make sure that I was being vetted based on my qualifications and not characteristics about myself over which I had absolutely no control. There's lots of incredibly well-educated, qualified um, women who would be very effective in this role. Or, and there's, there's plenty of men who would be effective in this role. Uh, but I do think that making the standard qualifier race and sex is really limiting to to American thought process. I don't know why we would want to look at things that way. There's also this ongoing problem where we assume that someone who has a specific skin color or biological sex has specific views that are shared among people who all look like them or have those same um, you know, reproductive capabilities. And I think that's really a mistake and I think it limits our imagination. Well, okay, so I'm, just to clear, I'm looking this up. Gabbard apologized for her. I, I, I don't want to, anyone who's a supporter of her to say we got this wrong. In 2012, Gabbard apologized for her anti-gay advocacy and said she would fight for the repeal of DOMA. 2012 is when Barack Obama endorsed gay marriage, right? I don't think, I don't think that's, she's There's wildly out of step with the rest of the. being anti-gay. What? 
There's a difference between endorsing gay marriage and being anti-gay. Tulsi Gabbard was deliberately and openly anti-gay. But that, right. that defeats glad, the purpose. I'm glad she apologized. It's good she, it's good yeah. she apologized. She, right. That, that's that's uh, that's uh, kind of the point I, that she 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 was ag aggressively on the other side rather than uh, a lot of Democrats were just cowards over the issue. Yeah. Not that cowardice is good. All right, fair enough. That's I don't know anything the, about that, but yeah. Uh, so uh, just and just real quickly to Libby's point, I I feel like when Reagan said that we're going to put a woman on the Supreme Court. Like there, there was actually value in that. That wasn't tokenizing because if you don't do something affirmative to borrow a word, then the status quo is just going to prevail. And you're just constantly, every single time, going to say, yes, theoretically, I support the idea of eventually there being a woman on the Supreme Court. Uh, but, you know, next time. Because this this guy is great. He's the, he's mm -hmm. just he's just so super smart and he's the best. So we're putting this guy on this time, and you do that next time. You do that next time. You do that next time. And two hundred years later, you you don't have a single non-white male on the court. And so if you don't say, if you don't make a political commitment to a political idea, which is that I'm going to put a woman on the Supreme Court, then it's never going to happen. And if you're okay with that idea, then to me you have to also be okay with the idea that. Look, it's been more than 200 years. There has never been a black woman on the court. That's wrong. We need to make a political commitment to change that because if we don't, it won't change. And uh, the rest of yeah. it is just lip service. That, that's, that's why I think it's not tokenizing. Now, the, I think the problem is that if you don't talk about ideology, you might get some super corporate friendly uh, black woman justice on the Supreme Court. And you know, that's, that's something to be watched for too. I don't know, Michael, what's your take? Yeah, I just want to push back on this idea that the, it's somehow tokenism. Um, and first of all, tokenism would be when you have the first black justice, Thurgood Marshall, replaced by Clarence Thomas. That would be tokenism. What we're talking about here is the president openly saying that we want to have a black woman on the court. In the last 230 years, we have never had a black woman on the court. And that matters. That matters not just to America as a whole, but that matters to African Americans, people like me, who has a mother who went to law school while putting their kid through school while being a single parent. Like, there are qualified black women who should have been on the court previously, and the fact that they haven't been put on the court, I think, is an indictment on the country. And so I appreciate the fact that Joe Biden is saying, you know what, now, at this point, I am committed to putting a black woman on the court because they deserve to be there. And Libby, you tweeted that Biden had voted against Justice Clarence Thomas when he had the chance back in 1991. Now he wants race to be the qualifying factor. Does Biden believe he should have voted for Thomas, do you think? <laughs> I'm sure that he, I, I don't know, maybe he does, maybe he doesn't, maybe his views have changed. Under no circumstances do I think that a person's skin color or their reproductive organs or their sex uh, are qualifying factors for anything really other than you know perhaps having children in specific ways uh, i just don't think that those right, are no, qualifiers and there's a really, like the you know why don't have. we have well maybe you think it's dumb i think that it's perfectly reasonable to not think that i should be per, you know personally be elevated to some role because i'm a woman or because i have some specific skin color i think that's ridiculous but you're acting like you don't and benefit think, every day from your skin color and from your your social construct in society Right. What you don't? Why is this a personal conversation about what I may or may not do? You don't have any idea who I am or what I'm about. And I also wonder why aren't there more black men on the court? Why aren't there Asian men or women on the court? Why are we doing it this way? And Biden's why aren't there people for, who didn't go know, to Harvard <laughs> on the court? I I really don't know. These are great questions. Um, but I I just I really don't think that race and and sex are qualifying factors to hold a position, whether it's right, president or vice president. Right, but it's not, but it's not, president. it's not just random talent and chance that has led and to 95% sure of And I'm sure that there are incredibly qualified women who can take this role. And I'm sure that Biden will nominate a very qualified black woman to take the role. Um, and yes, there ought to be, you know, a diversity of appearances across the board. That doesn't give us ideological diversity. And, you know, I think it's reasonable to look at ideas and records as opposed to a person's sex or race for 
qualifying factors. All right, we got to leave it there. Libby and Michael, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks. More rising right after this.